Hey guys, you're watching the channel that nobody watches, The Punk Iroh Show, and I'm your host, as always, unfortunately for you, Punk Iroh, and today it's time, it's time for part two of the Ezra Buzzington interview. Yes, exclusively here on my channel. Make sure you hit like, smash that subscribe button. Sorry about my voice, that was like some sort of tickle going on. <coughs> I'm battling it, I'm fighting it. Let's get started. Roll the fucking intro, man. I remember the. Oh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm very honest with all that to say. I'm very grateful for Terry and, and Ricky with me on those well. I remember Terry talking about how Crumb wouldn't talk to him for years after the documentary came out. And, yeah, I heard that too. And they finally, you know, uh, talked to each other at some sort of festival. And Terry was like, Why haven't you talked to me in all these years? And Crumb's explanation was that the documentary made him look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a documentary. Yeah. That's what did it. Yeah. <laughs> Has nothing to do with cutting out pictures of Bugs Bunny and, you know, masturbating to it and all that right. stuff. Or the fact that you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. No, I, I, I've never heard that. Speaking of ad-libbing lines, because I think you're right. I mean, I'm an artist also, not on the level that you are, but if someone tells me to draw something... I feel way more comfortable when I can do it the way I want to. And I figure that's probably the same way with acting. Just you probably use the, the script as sort of like a skeletal structure of what you're going to do. Honestly, that, that's an interesting question because it totally depends. Um, 90, I would say 90 to 95% of the time with a film, depending on, on your role and the size of your role, um, you can ad lib often all you want. I mean, if you're starting to do anything the hell you want, but, but uh, very often you're encouraged to, one is encouraged to um, speak as the character. Now, this, this will normally be after they've gotten a few takes with the exact text. So they'll have the choice. So then you can say, okay, now I want to say this, now I want to say that, now I want to say this, so let's play, let's do that, and you just do. And, oh God, almost every single time, I can't think of a time that hasn't happened, every single time when I ad-lib, that's always what ends up in the film because it happened by luck and chance and, and years of training, I guess. Uh, uh, pretty good at, at coming up with my own thinking and finding the character and what he would actually say in that moment. Uh, plus, I'm a writer, so I know I have a sense of rhythm and what have you. Um, so, yes, that's for film. For television, no. You simply can't do it unless you're the star. You simply cannot do it. Is it because time um, restraints? No, it's because the writers run the show in television. Okay. In film, the writers do not run the show. In right. film, the writers, more often than not, aren't even allowed on set. Right. And that's a lot the of times thing. their scripts get butchered by some directors, oh, right? Completely. Completely. And that's why they're not allowed on set. <laughs> um, because, well, really, seriously, that literally is why. Because uh, film is, by its nature, a far more collaborative art than television is. Television is collaborative in that you need a lot of different departments that say one's for film pretty much and blah, 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 blah. But it, 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 it takes a, an army to make a show. Right. But within that army, just like the army, there are very specific rules and regulations and places to go and not go. Right. Um, one time I was in one of my early shows, which I thought was hilarious. There was this old oh, piece of shit show. What was it called? The Real Life of Desmond the Pfeiffer. Okay, I missed that one. I don't even think it lasted a season. My show never aired. It didn't even last a season. It was with Chai McBride and uh, several other actors you've recognized. You should look it up. It's just, okay. it's just terrible. Um, but it, it's a period piece during Lincoln's uh, presidency during that period. And I'm, you know, I've, I've been cast as some guy at some a gala party thing at the White House where I introduced myself. I'm about to go off to Civil War. I'm going to introduce myself to a lovely young lady, and that's really all I say is my name. Hello, my name is blah, 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 blah. And then I'm escorted away. And that's it. One line on this piece of shit show. It was like my <laughs> second TV show I ever did. And so I'm <laughs> in the makeup chair, and Chai McBride, who's the lead, 
playing Desmond for Fiverr, happens to uh, come and sit next to me and get his makeup. We introduce ourselves. I say, hi, my name is Ezra Buzzington. He goes, oh my God, that's a much better name than the one they gave you. You should say that. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> what do I care? And this, keep in mind, is before a live audience. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So the cameras roll. And I just remember the director. The director, director is Matthew Diamond. He was a really cool, dude. Uh, <laughs> you know, this, it just, this just took some balls. I'm sorry, but it did. It's oh my thought, God. How great would it be, though? How fucking great would it be to have tape of me saying in a full, you know, um, Civil War era uh, uh, uniform with this lady in a hoop skirt walk over to us, hello, my name is Ezra Buzzy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fucking cool I have that tape for my oh my god yes so you know they called action and I hit my mark and I said hello my name is Ezra Bosnitz and we continued to shoot and then I kind of glanced over where the director was and saw the script person who's the one in charge of absolutely everything technical on the set with regard to text and uh, movement and she write, he or she writes everything down for the editor eventually to match and fix at any rate it's a very important job he, 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 it was a male script supervisor, as I recall, leaned over to the director. I thought, oh my God, they're going to check. Oh, oh, and sure enough, the AD came over to me and said, um, hi, Ezra, quick question. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. He goes, did you say my name is Ezra Buzzington instead of your character? And I went, oh, you were, yeah, I did, because Chai and I were talking. <laughs> <laughs> and Chai decided that he thought it would be a better name. So I kind of pawned it off on the star. <laughs> But then he just looked at he looked over at Chai, who was on the other side of the set, who wasn't even uh, paying attention. And then he looked back to me and went, yeah, um, no, go back to the line is written. <laughs> 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 you know, so I wasn't fired. But that's the kind of thing, honestly, in Hollywood, you, you really do want to take those risks. Because you never know when they'll pay off. Um, they, they it easily could have turned into a recurring character if it had gotten a huge laugh, or if this the other thing that happened, or if Chai had maybe said, hey, keep it as a resident. Whatever, it's just, you never know. So you want to take risks, but you also don't want to waste money. You don't want to waste their time or money, so you have to be careful when you do it. You have to be very selective. Yeah. You're I fearless. What we were originally talking about, though. We were talking about something else. I don't remember what it was. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but you're, you're the host, man. You have to keep track of that shit. You're supposed I to be know, supervisor. I know. <laughs> write them down. Do you have a pencil? I do. Write it down. I right? can't write. You know I'm from Muncie. <laughs> well, you know, there's Muncie. <laughs> Uh, you're fearless, though, man. I love that about you. I've always loved that about you. That I'm fearless? Fearless, yeah. You're fearless. Not beardless. You might uh, have a beard. I don't know. I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, no, I don't have I have my mother's beard. You know, <laughs> um, I can't grow. I've got, like, a little growth just because I don't like the jowls that are showing the bed. <laughs> so I oh, my God. That's I why like I do it, too. That's all I can handle. It's the only reason. Um... I don't, I don't remember what we were talking about. Oh, oh, oh I know, ad-libbing. Yeah, um, ad-libbing. Because uh, I... Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Because I think, I personally think that you have ad-libbed, and I'm pretty sure I have this information right, that you ad-libbed probably the best line in cinema history. What's that? Uh, and you're probably going to correct me. You're probably going to say I'm wrong. But I think you ad-libbed in Me, Myself, and Irene, uh, Get Your Cock Out of My Chrysler, uh, You Son of a Bitch. That is, I mean, did these just say, it was the Farley Brothers, right? Or Fairley Brothers? Uh, Fairley Brothers, yeah, the Fairley Brothers. And it's funny because they had just said, you know, we'd shot it a couple times, uh, as was. And then they just said, okay, you guys, now just say whatever you want. Just do it. They're really cool. <laughs> it was like, all right, great. So I'm standing on my mark, which is on the inside of the store. And they're all on the outside. You know, I've got, you know, the guy who's got me to my car with me. I've got a couple ADR uh, interns and PAs, what have you, around and uh, probably sound is, is in the office, uh, in the uh, store as well. Anyway, uh, so they're just about to call action, and I suddenly ding on this idea, and I lean, or don't lean, I look over to uh, one of the guys, I think it's a gaffer, he's holding a light shield or something. I said, what kind of car is that? Because I hadn't even noticed. <laughs> I, couldn't see through the, I couldn't see through the doors. He goes, I don't know. I said, well, find out. What fucking kind of car is that? I'm not drunk, set up to throw a fit, and about to call action. So I need an answer right now. <laughs> I know like, oh, he looked at me. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's a Chrysler. I went, Chrysler. God, perfect. So, <laughs> so, so, because you want alliteration. So it's like, 
you know, get your cock out of my Chrysler, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Like, it has a really good rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> and that kid, that kid, Carrie runs off and he dives through the car window like he did the dozen of the And I'm yelling and screaming and throwing. I wasn't supposed to throw the walker, but I threw the walker. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. But there was an even, even better scene. I'm so bummed it was cut. Uh, and it was only cut for time. That's the only reason I picked that, honestly. And uh, why anybody really ever gets cut is for time at the film. And it was an unnecessary moment, funny as it was. And they included it on the DVD extras, which is me on fire in the car. Oh, my God. I love that scene. It's hilarious. And yeah. And the Fairley brothers on the commentary talk to each other. And they're saying, what's it just fucking hilarious? Why did we cut this? I don't know why we cut this. It's great. It's like, yeah. yeah, I don't know why you fucking cut it either, guys. <laughs> Isn't your cast on fire? Second. Isn't your cast on fire in that scene or something? No, I've got that. I've got that thing. What the, the helmet halo? It's called a halo. Oh yeah. That thing, so you can't move your neck. I'm obviously on a uh, flatbed in the car. I'm right. not driving the car, so I'm on a flatbed. The camera's up there right in front of me. I've got a guy to my immediate right. of spring was like at one o'clock, where the camera's right at noon, and he's like right at one o'clock with a huge fire extinguisher. <laughs> because the back seat is water's on fire, and I could feel the heat. It was it was warm. You know, oh my god! Wind, so of course it would flip, and, but it was fun. You know, it's okay. So there's fire, fine. I'll, I'll, you know, I'm not an idiot. I'll get out of here if I have to. So it'll be fine. And I love doing stunts if I can. Um, so that wasn't. Re- I guess it was a stunt. I don't really know if they classify that as a stunt. But it, uh, it was a blast. It was so much fun shooting that, and then I laughed, and then I went home, and that was got the movie. <laughs> well, that's go. happened to you a few times, right? Yeah. Endlessly. Yeah. Happens to everybody endlessly. David got me twice from Zodiac, David Fincher. We had him in for like an ad-libbed um, guy thinking he knows who the Zodiac killer is. Right. And he just had me just ad-lib a whole bunch of different things. Just talk, 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 talk. And so I did, and it was fun, it was whatever, bro. Um, then he decided to get rid of all of those. He did there were like 15, 20 people who he did the same thing with. None of them were included, um, which is fine. And then I shot a very brief uh, scene with Mark Ruffalo um, where I can't remember now what happened in the scene that he knocks on my door I open the door and I answer a couple questions and then it's cut and uh, so no big deal and that one was eliminated too for reasons I don't know uh, why um, but yeah you can't cut you can't you can't personalize it if you personalize it you're making a huge mistake yeah and so you don't know why it happened. Don't assume it's about you. Get rid of your ego, and maybe it's about the film. Maybe it was too good. You know, you just, you never know. I mean, I've, I've shot two commercials this year. Two. Neither of them have aired. So it's like, well, well whatever. You know, I got my day rate. You know, some residuals. But, you know, we've talked honest. before, though, about, you know, you've kind of dodged some bullets by actually being cut out. It was probably better for you that you cut, cut out of the film on a couple uh, occasions remember that's, prob- that's probably true but I don't know what I was talking about well I don't want to I don't want to say just in case he's no, listening go ahead, I'm uh, Rob Zombie oh Rob yeah um I, I I'm yeah um I'm on the DVD <laughs> I couldn't remember uh, the first one was eliminated but it was on the DVD as an extra right and actually, a friend of mine suggested to me was he saw the scene where I'm the, uh, um, the guy who keeps the graveyard, you know, with the groundskeeper. Broad daylight, and I uh, see somebody destroying the tombstone, and I start yelling and screaming, get out of my truck with this fabulous hound dog in it. Get out of this truck and head over to him with a shovel. Hey, get away from there, blah, blah, blah. I think I said in that, the take, even the, the one they included, I think I said fuck like eight times. Cocksucker three. I'm just so language. And had someone said to me on set, don't use that language. Pull it back. Like I would have. But it, you know, you're in the moment, so you don't think about it. And of course, they have to get a rating on this film. So they can only allow uh, so many cocksuckers, so many fucks, so many things. So it's not impossible that that's one of the reasons that scene was cut. Because it wasn't a bad kill. It wasn't the best kill, but it was all right. Um, that was a nice little scene that had music, so it made it all through to the final, probably, editing process. Um, but there was that one. And then for the next one, Rob promised me on the phone. Promise me. He says, right, I'll, I'll write you something that we can't cut. I get the script. I fly to Atlanta. I, I get the script. It's like, oh, I could totally cut this. You can totally cut this. <laughs> little thing. You don't need another kill. There are like three in a row, and you just don't need this one. And of course... You know, the delivery truck guy at the strip club, uh, the beer delivery truck guy, he gets killed. They cut it. 
but also honestly the way that was shot that day was was not conducive to it being a good kill um the camera was in pretty good placement but uh both uh, uh michael myers who played michael myers in that mike myers um a big guy I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah oh, who the fuck is it god damn it nice Thank you for watching the um, second installment of the Ezra Buzzington interview. I should have the third part up later this week. Busy as hell. If you guys want any um, <clears throat> commissions from me, I'm now open for commissions. You can check out my art. Uh, um, my art page down below <clears throat> in the link. And please check out the movie The Shed. Also in the link below. Until next time, I am going to drink shoe polish. Yeah, I'm probably going to drink some fucking shoe polish. Why not? See what happens.